Hello, my name is Cal Molone from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. Hi, my name is Johnny Howie. I'm from Richmond, Virginia as well, and I'm an anarchist. And today we bring to you the news from underground, actually covering a story this time on something that uh, kind of affects a lot of people, especially if you own a vehicle. Um, and here in the tax of Virginia, you're forced to continue to pay even after you kind of pay off the, I guess, the, the loan in full of your vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, prop property taxes uh, in terms of vehicle taxes here. So uh, just another form of extortion does it. So it just shows that you don't really actually own your car, mm -hmm. um, even if you have it in your own garage and you're not even using it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so. What? How does it uh, relate to uh, that? Well, you've heard of uh, Uber or Lyft. Lyft yeah. yeah. Um, they are basically one is a kind of, uh, you said it was for the posh, and the other <laughs> is kind of for the plebeians or the indie folk uh, who you want to save the planet or whatnot. So Uber is kind of your posh, Lyft is your, you know, more... Um, Typical financial accessible sharing. to everyone. Yeah. Um, so, like you look at the at the website for for Uber, you know they have really yeah. nice cars. They have uh, limousines you can select. It looks like you're uh, you can play a scene in a movie and you know being some kind of CIA agent. I guess uh, yeah. secret ultra sociopathic status. Um, but yeah, uh, it's interesting. I guess to so check out the website. So it seems like uh, Uber is targeting. Um, like in Northern Virginia, maybe McLean area, Tyson's Corner, uh, some of the more wealthy areas, and whereas they yeah. use the yeah, they use the well, company's vehicles. Well, Uber Uber is actually in seventy cities, in, you know, worldwide, and one of, you know I'm going to be talking about a little bit of what's going on in London as well at the about the same time as this whole you know. Uh, was it VDOT, VDOT or DMV? DMV. DMV. So the DMV, uh, you know, sent cease and desist letters to Uber and Lyft. So um, yeah. we're going to talk about. And with Lyft, Lyft is, uh, I like Lyft a little bit more because they, anyways, like you can start your own business with that. Uh, so these two, uh, in that, uh, they can hire drivers, they can hire you. You can make like $35 an hour just uh, driving people around uh, mm -hmm. and, and your own with your own vehicle. So they have an interesting self-relegating uh, system in which uh, the users can rate the drivers and the drivers can rate the, the, the users, the passengers. You know, if neither like each other, they'll make sure that none of you are ever paired up again. You know, if you rate them below a three, for example. Yeah. Um, so they provide efficient travel, uh, help full ease in terms of, uh, I guess, uh, the impact of a lot of cars on the roads, um, mm -hmm. I guess the uh, traffic congestion. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting kind of trade and it's no different than a ride share. Yeah. Um, ride share is essentially just, you know, people trying to beat out rush hour traffic and a lot of them figure, well, we all join the same car. Uh, and the way that they trade their services and energy is by rotating drivers. Uh, so they'll have to like people like I'll drive Monday, Tuesday in a car full of like, you know, 15 people. Yeah. Um, and they all do it by, you know, by smartphone apps. Yeah. Mostly it's all done. They'll, they'll text you a picture of the driver showing up. That's going to pick you up. So a lot of people feel safer with that kind of service. Whereas you, and most, you know, like in London, for example, you can't call a taxi service to come pick you up because it's, it's monopolized, you know, under a union, a government backed union. Um, and their training and certificate certification is all done. Uh, it's just kind of this make work program, whereas you know these other uh, companies that are now beating them out, you know, with innovation and their actual competitors now, you know, they want a cut. Yeah, yeah. they want to get a cut of that. And you know, whenever there's you know uh, proof profit to be made, especially from a new idea, um, the the government's going to be the first one to interfere to try to get their cut. Yeah, R regulation when it comes to government is just a code for saying, I see you're having, you know, you're making some money here, you know, versus our cut or else. Um, and that's all that means in terms of regulation and licensing um, and, and trying to put new laws. Is this another way of them trying to find, well, how much money can we make from this? How much can we steal from these uh, people? Um, so they're having the same problems here. The uh, tax DC Taxi Cab uh, Commission is also trying to shut down uh, wow. Uber and, uh, and, and those kinds of uh, agencies because it competes against their kind of monopoly on, uh, you know, providing. Uh, services and transportation. Um, so it's, again, it's no different than ride sharing. You know, the way that they're trading uh, is by exchanging uh, times behind the wheel. Uh, mm -hmm. These people don't want to exchange time. You would you let uh, strangers drive your car? No, I, I would imagine. You know, you have better. Uh, yeah, but so they, they actually do that in Japan, though. By the way, in yeah, Japan, oh. <laughs> they'll, they'll actually like like a group of friends or you know people or strangers, and they'll. They'll, you know, coordinate by text messaging or whatever, and they just, you know, they uh, they all share a car. They yeah. all know each other, and usually, I mean, I would, but I think there are some instances where people, you know, rent them out too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 
what's happening right now here in local uh, tax firm of Virginia uh, and in DC is that DMV is threatening this. Uh, they're threatening, uh, they're, they're shutting down. They've sent uh, extortion mm. threats of uh, like over a thousand dollars for these companies and cease and desist letters. Okay. Uh, because uh, the way that the, these businesses are starting, and of course, uh, the, the government can't keep up with the demand of and fast efficiency of technology. Uh, so, like the regulations that uh, outlaw this sort of uh, activity, uh, you know, predates I guess during the time where it was just mostly limousines and taxicab services uh, of yeah. those kinds of nature. So this is like, uh, and, and the law was so old that it takes time to change it. So it'll probably take another year uh, for the government to kind of legalize this sort of behavior activity. Yeah. Um, so yeah, DMV is uh, being another you know, extortionist arm of the state um, saying, you know, fuck you and your, your, I guess, way of trying to uh, help people, uh, I guess, have, have working lives because yeah, it's providing well, to, business. To meet a demand too, actually, like when the when the taxi cab service recently went on strike in London, that was only for an hour just to make a statement. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that caused severe traffic congestion. But like during that time period, the customer's satisfaction is going down with them and it's going up with Uber. So Uber's rides, um, Ridership is going up. They said almost 850 hmm. percent. So I mean, they're rising as you know the rising competitor because it's so efficient yeah. and simple. And um, so, what the taxi lobbyists are really saying is that we should, you know, we should be able to either steal Uber's business model, or you know, uh. nobody can use it at all. But you know, the public sector is always slow with upgrading technology, and so you know. This than one thing I hate about uh, businesses that advocate for government, uh, they're like, uh, like fucking uh, jealous tax slaves. Uh, they're saying, well, look, the government's taking this much from us. We're being licensed. We're being regulated. We're being, you know, whipped mm -hmm. all the time uh, through state regulation. Uh, like PayPal, for example, pays to like I would say nearly half their profit on, uh, you know, keeping away the state uh, in, in terms of state regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, so. For uh, these taxi cabs, that's kind of what they're looking at. Uber, looking at Lyft, looking at even in London, uh, these kind of unions. Uh, they look at this co competitor and say, "Well, you guys haven't suffered in the way we have suffered. You know, yeah. uh, it's unfair that you're not being treated as equal tax slaves." Um, so you get this kind of jealous competition. Um, you know, trying to use the the arm and uh, the violence of the state to get involved. Um, Very much, and it's it's even worse in, in London. Right, and that's not capitalism. Yeah. That's not capitalism. Capitalism is respect for uh, pri private property uh, and voluntary trade. So when trying to advocate for government, that becomes crony capitalism that doesn't has nothing to do with the free market um, so yeah with, with that it's uh that so here, here's what the DMV's pro actually under cease and desist letter mm. so uh, Commissioner Richard Holcomb uh, should bag uh, told representatives for both companies that he is once again making clear that they must stop operating in Virginia until they get the proper authority yeah yeah, how how dare you try to make a living for yourself? How dare you try to yeah. uh, involve yourself in voluntary interactions with other people, right? Yeah, but then there's also the angle that you know um, that I mean, we called them a glorified taxi service in the beginning, but you know they don't call themselves that. They call themselves a driver for hire or a ride sharing service. Yeah. So they're you know they're using you know the terminology to kind of meet this loophole that they were kind of expecting um, where they do get that in other countries but uh, it's not working out in Virginia. No. Yeah. Uh, in response, uh, <laughs> in response, Lyft basically said fuck you to the government and said that they'll continue to operate in Virginia. Mm. So, uh, in, in the face of those threats, uh, you know, there's like, look, we're going to do what we're going to do. This is our property, well, this is our vehicle. They didn't literally say fuck you, they, but uh, they were like, we provide, uh, you know, a safe service to our customers. Kind yeah, of yeah, they said so we provide our, we regulate ourselves, we, we yeah. covered our own insurance, we took all the measures and states to provide a safe yeah. uh, service for, for their customers. Um, and it's great reviews. <laughs> People love it. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, when the government's not getting a cut, that's when they want to get involved. Um, so, yeah, they, and the fact that they said they were going to continue anyways essentially says fuck you. Yeah. Um, whereas a lot of businesses and a lot of people are afraid in the backlash of the state, these people are contesting the, uh, I guess, the, 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 I guess, what do they call it? The citation fine, um, mm -hmm. the extortion fee. Yeah. Uh, so they're contesting it, they're taking a court, and should anyone always take uh, anything that you're kind of accused of to court. Um, and look up Mark Stevens. Um, but yeah, once again, remember this is, uh, in terms of these vehicles, this is, the, there's a private owner to these vehicles. The state does not own any of that stuff. Your car belongs to you, like your body belongs to you. Uh, but whenever you advocate for government, this is the kind of you know crony bullshit that you get. Um, I guess involvement in this kind of a uh, voluntary area in this life in this market that's this flourishing is thriving yeah. and um, providing efficient uh, transportation um, yeah. 
So, and this is something as easy as like me and you could start right now. I mean, yeah. it's like it's it, and again, when I was back back when I was saying, whenever there's a profit to me be made, especially with a new idea, which is usually created by the next generation yeah. um, and advances of technology, they see that and they want to you know squash it quickly because I mean, well, not only do they want to be paid, but they don't want people comp competing with them. Yeah, yeah. Very similar to something we also know as a mafia, yeah. or a, you know, your local drug dealer. Don't deal on my turf or anything. Yeah. Like, you know, like so. It's just, um, yeah. yeah so it's a fucking it's, shame. It's keeping us down. You know, like something as simple that we you know know how to use very efficiently, effectively. Um, yeah, we, we can't profit from it. Right. We always kind of lose that opportunity. And profit is just another word for reward, and that's, that's right. essentially what these uh, clients and our customers are doing. They they enjoy the service. You know, here, here's the reward. I accept them right. to the terms and conditions. I value the service more than what I'm uh, trading in, in return. Um, so which is great because that means that they can employ more people, expand and grow, and uh, keep evolving with that. I mean, they have apps for this. I think that's, that's beautiful. That's awesome. Like, fast efficiency. Yeah, half of human knowledge yeah. <laughs> history is on your in carrying in your pocket, and you can't use it for what you could be using it for. It's kind right. of you know you're depriving that right from also you know consumers of technology. Yeah. I mean, of being able to kind of go forward and progress and, mm -hmm. and you no, know, but we got to wait for the, the black cabbie service, the old funky little black cabs yeah. <laughs> with plastic seat covers and rattly doors. And mm -hmm. it's like supposed to be this iconic thing for London. And, but the residents have already expressed their, you know, dissatisfaction with it. So, I mean, they sure just don't want to change with the time. Yeah. And it sort of beats right in the Metro, especially in DC. So, yeah. uh, that monopoly again of uh, transportation. Um, yeah, so with that, I know if there's any kind of backlash, angers that you have, direct it towards the DMV uh, Commissioner uh, Richard uh, Holcomb and uh, tell him, you know, fuck you, you know, tell him you're not invited to my store, you're not invited to my, my, my place of business. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, this, these are the people who are hurting the economy. These are the kind of people who are kind of robbing uh, potential uh, job openings, um, growth yeah. of business, employment. Um, and, and people who are, who are using this uh, love it. There's a lot of awesome reviews uh, that they're stating. But check out their website. Um, Uber and Lyft will place it down at the end of this video. Um, but yeah. Also, I uh, just wanted to say, um, to also check out uh, a new writing that I'm kind of working on. And the, the reason I kind of brought out London, because I'm already pretty familiar with doing some research. Uh, I wanted to uh, create a paper about, um, an, or an article about the private versus public uh, benefits mm -hmm. of just the bus sector. Uh, it's really difficult to find that kind of data and do that research because there's really no examples yeah. here in the United States that I could find. Um, so it's really interesting and, and all the the costs, uh, operating costs were much more efficient. The the coverage areas mm -hmm. and the times in which they could cover the areas of London were better. Um, yeah, so just stay tuned for that and uh, that it also brings us back to, you know, where these kind of privatized or private uh, trans transit or transportation services originated in the private sector. Yeah. You know, so. Um, and the state tries to co co op it and yeah. help host those, uh, I guess, cartels, those monopoly cartels um, in the business. Yeah, so even then, when that technology was rising, you know, they used the Great Despre Depression as an excuse. Mm -hmm. You know, after years and years of building capital, like you, let's say you owned an omnibus company or mm -hmm. something, and uh, in Richmond or, or the streetcar company, um, and then they just came in and said, "You can't operate here, and we're, but we're going to take this over." Yeah, like we're going to take your stuff or buy it from you. I don't know how, how it really worked, but it's. I mean, can you can you just imagine like you as an entrepreneur that built that? You know, yeah. Everything the government has, remember, and gives away for free was taken from someone else, was stolen from someone else. It was never really justified. There was no like data or anything that we, you know, you'd have to present saying that public, you know, services just in general, you know, public utilities and whatnot, um, are better than privately, you know, yeah. done ones. Most so that exist just, today are just uh, yeah cartels uh, paying off the government, uh, kind of working side by side, especially with in terms of public utilities. Yeah, but this is the research I have to do. Like, mm -hmm. I have to go back and show yeah, private yeah. companies are more efficient and effective and also equitable because if you're efficient and effective, you can, you can cover more areas. Mm -hmm. you, can do, you can make sure everybody's getting their fair share, um, which is the, the main concern. Yeah. But uh, it's, we'll it's been proven not to be true. It's, it's right. not. 
the public can't offer those things uh, better than the private sector. Absolutely, absolutely. But why do I have to make this case when it was never made originally to, to nationalize it? Yeah. So uh, with that, hopefully you enjoy this video. We're going to post a link uh, to that article, uh, I guess, throughout next week. And uh, with that, this is Kamal Lene signing off. All right. See so you guys at the victory party. <laughs>